Number 11, not supporting your mate's recovery. All too often, we'll sit there and start through this process and then immediately go, why can't you just get over it? I've told you everything. What's your problem? Why do you keep harping on this? As they continue to ask questions over and over. Your mate needs a great deal of support as they begin to move through this. Your journey is a thousand times easier than their journey. Ultimately, all you're going to get is freedom. You're going to be able to finally be honest. They, on the other hand, have to go through the process of trying to forgive. At the moment that you had that affair, they lost trust in all of their reality. They no longer believe their past. They don't trust that. They don't trust their present because they don't even know what's going on. They certainly don't trust you. They don't trust themselves. They don't trust what's in their future. They're completely disoriented. They feel like you don't care. They don't matter to you. You're not going to be there for them. And by sitting there and just saying, why don't you just get over it or it's time to move on and not giving them time to heal is only going to make things worse. So please don't do that to them. Instead, accept the fact that it's probably going to take somewhere between 18 to 24 months for you to get past this. And you sitting there and supporting them, you being there for them through this process and being patient will be one of the main things that allows them to know that you're safe again. Number 12, not being consistent in your recovery plan. Infidelity completely destroys trust. And the only safe thing they've got are the actions they can see you doing. Your words mean absolutely nothing to them, but your actions speak much. So be consistent with what you say you're going to do. You only have to be consistent about 90 plus percent of the time. Research shows if someone fails to follow through with their commitments 54% uh, of the time, we will always consider that person untrustworthy. It also shows that if we're consistent 90 plus percent of the time, they're always going to be considered trustworthy. Sadly, most of us operate somewhere in the 60% range. Follow through with what you say you're going to do. Follow through with that plan so that they can begin to see you as trustworthy, which is a critical piece to their being able to redevelop trust. The second thing that happens with infidelity is they're ascribed the shame of what you did, even though they didn't do anything. But when they're out in public, they feel that their reputation, their honor, has been completely destroyed because of the dishonor you've brought them. Even if people don't know what you did, they will continue to feel that shame. In a recent survey that we did at A Fair Recovery, 84% of those who had been betrayed said the primary thing their mate could do to restore honor for them, what made them feel good again, was their mates working a recovery program being consistent in all of those things because that made them feel safe and it made them feel proud. So if you want to restore your mate's honor, if you want to make them feel safe and see you as a trustworthy person, then please be consistent with what you say you're going to do. Number 13, not keeping commitments you make with your mate. This may sound similar to the one up above, but as you go through this, you're going to make agreements probably with your mate in order to keep them safe. Might be boundaries such as not going to lunch with other people or not taking a cell phone or an iPad or something into a bathroom, um, not being alone in a room with another person of the opposite sex, whatever those agreements are. Frequently as things begin to get better, we make the serious error of beginning to fudge on those agreements with our mate. And when we do those things, once again, we begin to destroy trust and mess everything up. If you say, for instance, you're going to keep a daily journal letting them know what's happening, and they say they don't care, you stay committed to doing that journal, because I promise you, within four and a half months, if they check to see if you're doing that journal, even though they said that they didn't care, if you're not doing it, you'll destroy all the progress you've made up to that point. So ultimately, keep those agreements that you make with your mate. Number 14, telling your mate to forgive you. 
Forgiveness is a gift. All too often, we'll sit there and say, will you please forgive me? Which then puts a moral imperative on your mate to forgive you. Ultimately, I believe I got my forgiveness, not from her, but my forgiveness was this way. I mean, I was able to accept God's forgiveness for me and let that go. My concern needed to be not on my mate forgiving me, but on my mate being able to forgive for her sake, not for my sake. Rather than telling them they've got to forgive you, I'd strongly suggest you just say, I hope you can forgive me and I'm going to do everything possible to help you along that road. I certainly know that would be a gift from you, but I don't deserve that. But I hope you can come to that place for your sake. Number 15, not answering all of your mate's questions. It's really tempting to try to control your mate by the flow of information, to tell yourself, why should they be hurt because of what I've done, what they don't know, can't hurt me, more or less. But until you're willing to trust them with the information, again, they're not going to be able to trust you. It is critical that you be able to answer all of their questions. One of the frustrations you may come across is you'll find them asking the same question over and over and over. Please don't make the mistake of thinking they're doing that to trap you or to drive you crazy. Until your mate is able to wrap their mind around what happened where they can really get it, they're not able to control their flooding and move on to the next process, to the next task. So when they're asking questions over and over, it's not because they want to hurt you or they want to somehow trap you. Betrayed spouses continue to ask the same question over and over because they want to be with you. They're trying to just understand it so that they can move on. And if your mate's willing to keep trying to process that and ask those same questions to understand so they can be with you, please be patient with them. One last thing I would suggest in answering questions, however, is if there are questions that create comparison, where they're comparing themselves against the other person, I would ask if they would be willing to go through or use the 24-hour rule. Say, look, I don't mind giving you that answer, but if you would please think about it or pray about it for 24 hours and decide if that's information that's really going to help you move forward. And if at the end of 24 hours they still want that information, then please give it to them. But don't make the critical error of not giving them information because they'll never be able to trust you until you can trust them with that info. Number 16, not talking to your mate. I understand that when someone's been betrayed that they can go off the reservation, they're so upset that they'll say things that are really hurtful. Uh, we call that trying to transmit pain rather than trying to transform it. Uh, but that's normal when someone's in a state of trauma. So I would suggest you be patient. But sitting there trying to shut them down by you shutting down and not saying anything back to them is going to drive them crazy, which is called passive-aggressive behavior. Don't try to hurt them by not talking to them. At least engage them and listen as long as you're there for them. Even if they're struggling, then they know you care. But by stonewalling and not talking, you're only going to make things worse. So don't make the mistake of refusing to talk to them. At least find time for the two of you to process. Number 17, trying to get your mates, friends, and families on your side. It's not uncommon for us to want to team build to get people to support us against whatever's wrong with our mate. But I can tell you it's a huge mistake. Let your mate have their own support system. Don't try to leave them desolate as a way of punishing them for what you've done. Huge mistake. Instead, you stand tall, find people to support you, but don't try to turn other people against your mate and make them the problem when in reality this is about your choices. Number 18.
believing there's a simple solution or a fixed course to fix this problem. <laughs> there's not. And if you believe that there's a simple way to get through all of this, then ultimately that's going to frustrate the heck out of everybody and you're going to be the one sitting there telling your mate, why can't you just get over this? This is a difficult path. Recovery is this sort of process. It gets better, it gets worse, it gets better, it gets worse. But over time, you'll be able to see that it's trending better if you're doing the right type of work. Some of you will get two or three weeks into a course and you may say something like, man, this isn't helping, things are just getting worse. And oftentimes things do get worse till they get better. But our research shows they get better if you keep working it. So please don't think there's a simple formula. This is going to take work and it's going to take time, but there is hope. Number 19, threatening your mate. When your mate's out of control, when maybe they're shaming with their words or they seem to be, you know, what I call scorched earth and their anger, they're telling people or they're doing things that are really hurtful. If you start bringing up things in the past about your mate to shame them or if you threaten them with leaving or doing something to the kids or whatever in an attempt to control them, in the long run, that is going to really create a problem. Instead, just be compassionate and try to support them don't threaten them. I know it's going to be difficult if you're a fight or flight or a fight type of person rather than a flight type of person, but try to be silent and listen, engage, take responsibility for their feelings, and don't threaten. That's only going to make this process much worse. Number 20, using your children as pawns. All too often in an attempt to control their mate, people will start talking about the kids and how they're going to take the kids away or how you're hurting the kids or what you're doing to the kids and, and ultimately putting the kids in the middle between the two of you is going to be a huge mistake because it's not good for the kids and it's not going to help recovery. So please just keep the kids out of this. If your kids do know something and you've got to tell them something, less is more. Just sit there and say, maybe I've done something horrible. Anything along that line. And then say, we're taking care of this. This is none of your business. We're still mom and dad. So our marriage is our thing. But we do want you to know, I made a mistake, and we're going to work at fixing all of this. But don't include your kids, and don't use them as pawns to try to get your mate to do something. Now that I've gone through these mistakes, I suspect you've made lots of them, just like I did when I was in recovery. But being aware of them is the first step of being able to change it. All you want to do is make a commitment, come up with a plan of how I'm going to stop these things because each one of these 20 mistakes is only going to make things worse. And here at Affair Recovery, our desire is for you to get through this as quickly as possible, not for you to drag this out as long as you possibly can. Many of these mistakes are covered in our free First Steps Boot Camp for Surviving Infidelity. I hope you'll take the time to go through those. It will address issues that are on this list, such as how you deal with children, or the questions, or dealing with disclosure, or timelines, or ways to keep things safe. It's a great first step. So to avoid these mistakes, at least take the time to go through that boot camp. If your mate won't do it with you, go through it by yourself and you'll have specific actions you can begin to take to avoid these mistakes.